let's um, we're gonna move into uh, more of a less deep, less sad situation. He's still sad in his own way. Uh, Tim Westwood. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I'll start. I'll start. I um, I kind of knew. I, I kind of knew two thousand. It was twenty twenty. In the, in the pandemic, I knew something was happening because I, I knew there was, um, the, the, there was an investigation internally within the BBC itself. Ever since the whole Jimmy Savile thing and yada yada yada, so they now go, they've they, they, they're going, they've been going backwards. They've been going back. I think it was to the sixties to look at the presenters they had on radio and TV and see if they've got any skeletons in their closet. So I kind of knew that um, Tim Tim West was being investigated on, and I kind of knew that there were researchers as well on that. Um, we're in the pandemic. This is twenty. I still got the message on my Facebook uh, inbox. I get something. I get a notification on my phone. Uh, something came through. It was a guy I'm not Facebook friends with. Um, he sent me the thing. Went through into my spam folder, so I read it. And then I said, "Before I even reply or anything, let me just check out who this person is." So as you do, check like that guy's info, blah, blah blah. He's a journalist. He's a researcher. He does. I think he does a bit of freelancing, but works for the BBC in, in, in the main. And um, so I then proceeded to read the message, and it, it was um, hi. Um, I'm paraphrasing here, so it's I, honestly I take my phone and read it. But it's it was hi. Um, we, we we are doing a documentary in Team Westwood, and um, in regards to um, certain accusations from women um, that has come to light. Um, and we, have you got anything that you need to add to that or say? I was kind of taken aback because. I'm, th- I'm thinking, okay, hold on. One, one thing is, who are you? Yeah. Um, why me? I, I d- the only connection I have with Tim West is I, I, did, I did an event um, in the mid noughties This is 2004. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tim West was the headliner. Sold out, made money, boom, boom, boom. He came, came on time. And that was it. So to the, and that was prior to 2020. That was 16 years ago, mm-hmm. right? And as you guys know, my Facebook, my Facebook name is not my real name, right? Um, I mean, I, I can only put that in being doing a good job because it was the, I thought, where is the link? It's like if I had done a, a Westwood gig, say, a year before, two years, even five years before, I would get it, all right? So I replied back to him. I said, dude, I, I've done it, didn't, I have nothing to tell you. It's not because I'm trying to fob anything or fob you off. I have n- genuinely have nothing to say. The only thing I can say is, yeah, I did a booking with him uh, years ago in 2004. He came down. He knew what his set time was. He plugged in the radio show, came down, did it. We saw it out. A thousand people came to the club. Boom, done. That's, that's the only thing I saw. I, if it's, I have nothing to give you. So there's, no, there's no element of, oh, he's snitching. I just had nothing. And he, he replies, thanks, blah, 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 and that's it. So obviously... The, um, the documentary came out, which I still haven't watched yet, but obviously I, I've seen clips, I've heard about blah, blah, blah. And he's now had to leave, because yeah. I think he, he left yeah, the BBC, he went to Capitol now, yeah. 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 Um, and the, I think the story is now centered around seven, is it seven women or so, uh, regards to that. And um, I, again, I'm, I'm, my, I'm still, I still find it a mind blown moment that Tim Westwood is a year older than my mom. It's, it's, it's insane. Is, is the OT Tim Westwood, isn't it? It's just like, wow, okay. He's been a while. <laughs> and my, I, I, I have, I have, I don't know anything about that, blah, blah, blah. All I can say regards to Tim Westwood is, rightly or wrongly, how people see him, he pioneered what we, when I say pioneered, is in, he took it to mainstream radio. That's all I can give him. I've booked him once, he arrived, he was professionally arrived in time, did his thing, blah, blah, blah. Now, everything else, I mean, I look at this, there's no smoke without fire, yeah. right? And if he has done, let's say half of the, the seven accusations, let's say half of it is true, he needs to be locked up. Say one of it is true, he still needs to be locked up, yeah. right? But then again, we, we do have, we know situations and scenarios where people are, have um, basically to try and gain, gain clout or make name for themselves. They will make up stories, blah, 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 to be what it is more than what it seems, right? So what you, what you guys take on it 
Uh, we're going to touch on this briefly uh, on the end. What do you think should happen? Well, yeah, are you, do you have any personal experience? Have you heard anything here, say, or rumors about something similar to what he's been, do what Westwood has done in regards to Westwood? I haven't heard anything personally, like, you know, um, you know, because Westwood's been around for a minute, mm -hmm. you know, and, and normally you hear rumors about someone like, watch out for him, he's a bit of a, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's a bit handsy. You know, he's he's a bit gropey and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And and similar to you, um, I I did Westwood's first Capital um, uh, Radio One rap show mm -hmm. uh, at uh, Candom Palace, um, Candom Lock, sorry, not Candom Palace. And yeah, he just come across as a as a normal DJ then. Yeah, I mean, spoke to him and and, and that was it. But <laughs> if these rumors are, are are true and they're held up. Mm -hmm. and he deserves, you know, everything. The full force of the law. The full force of the law, everything that's coming to him, because it sh then it will transpire that he's taken advantage of his position, mm -hmm. which is the yeah. uh, the bad thing. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he's, 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 you know, I'm a famous DJ. Um, I can make you a star. Sit on my couch. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, then all of that needs to be rooted out. Oh, Kelly, there's, uh, no, thing, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. there's no place for that. In, uh, in 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 anyone's book, whether it was back in the day or moving forward, mm -hmm. all this negative stuff that happens to, to females, males, whatever, it all needs to be rooted out so we can all move forward and live a pleasant life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, you can't be abusing your authority. You know, if the woman doesn't like you, if she doesn't like you, move on. Okay. I mean, again, again, for the interest of balance, um, and I'm saying, if it is, if these yeah, it, it, it's in the inter, inter, interest of balance. They, they, they could be. I could use. The, we know, I'm a dude. I'm a straight dude. Uh, a DJ, blah blah blah. And we know, and I'm even as big as West in terms of branding. I I know women that will just literally throw yes. yourself, yes. throw themselves at you yes. because of who you are or what yeah. you are, right? Yeah. And yeah. I've always considered men to be weak. I'm a man, I can say that. Yeah. Uh, it's, show me a little pum pum, well, it's going down. So it's... Don't come for me, pum pum showers. Give me a little bit of wiggle. Oh, hello. <laughs> I've just so, seen an ankle, man. Uh, I so, so, that's so, what it was back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can give you stories, bro. We're going to go there. <laughs> Ah, oh, so, I used to work the doors, so I yeah, you see it. Security as well. Security. Let us in. Uh -huh. yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's it's, oh, it's, listen, it's so the doors at a club when mm -hmm. it was three pounds to get in. Yeah, three pounds, and they still want to, and they're still they're trying to that. throw themselves. Yeah, to let like, you in exactly. It's three pounds. <laughs> I'll pay for you. Uh, so so oh, we we, uh, we we have to. I mean, obviously. He, he has to defend himself in the court of law, blah, 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 and hopefully more, more of the facts will, will come out. Is it a legal case or is more case? It's just a documentary. They still did still like an investigation, it, isn't it? I, oh, are they? Yeah. I feel like I, it's, it's, it's been formally been charged. Not, he's not been formally charged yet, but they're still obviously like apparently gathering evidence. Okay. But, but, but let's put it this way. His, or, or his, his career is done. Right? Is it, though? Bro, which these, major radio station gonna pick him up? These lot slip and slide away. Dude, stuff which ma major, which major radio station is gonna pick Westwood up? Bro, he can just retire on. That's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm saying. His career is done. I, I mean, I, he's bro, still got. At the time that this thing was out, he's taking a big budget booking in Ghana. Yeah, no, that's cancelled. Places that are still having. Yeah, that's it's cancelled. Not, it's not. He's in Ghana, bro. He's in Ghana touring clubs. There's girls all around him. He's living the yeah, best but, life. Yeah, but end of the, 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 yeah, the, but end of the day, he's still a UK-based human being. So his, his bread and butter will yeah. be UK. So what I'm saying is, yeah. is his brand is done in the UK. He's not going to, in terms of majors, he's not going to be on a major radio station anymore. He can start his own podcast or start his own mm -hmm. little internet radio thing. Yeah. But he's not, it's, it's in terms of no self-respecting mainstream venue in this country at the moment with that, with that out hanging over his head is going to book him. I don't know, he's I not, feel like he's, he's, he's a powerful name, a powerful brand and he could get... Nah, I think he's done. I um, until, yeah. until this until gets this cleared, if it, ever goes, if it ever does get cleared. When the whole thing come out, yeah, um, I forgot the name of the rapper, but there was a rapper that called him out about this and the guy got blacklisted from everything. Yeah, we, we're not calling. We're not calling him out. We just no, 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 no. no. I'm, saying, yeah. I'm, saying, I'm saying like, did you, did you hear about that? Oh, nah, that nah. There's a there's an artist. I forgot the name of the artist. Yeah, that was doing well. He's up and coming, right? And I think he went to 
either fire in the booth or he had a show or something that Westwood was at. And he came out and I think he put on social media, like, yo, this guy's a creep, bruv. The guy's little girls and that. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I can see that. Can see the black and, then, and then he got blackballed from, like, his music got banned. Like, he's selling his, his album that was supposed to drop as an NFT. And on the album, he actually calls. One of the reasons why, or there's a track on there mm. where he calls yeah. Westwood out. But I just... I thought that was... I, I just... And that's just this, let's, go, let's go back into it again. I just think that, basically, what I'm saying is... Yeah. It, it, if it has to go to court, it needs to go to court or go to a tribunal or inquiry. We need, we need to get the full story out because yeah. end of the day, if the women are actually telling the truth, even just one of them, yeah. we need to know it and hear it and hopefully try and put a stop to that because, again, it's, it's again, men in position of power. But what I also want to try and say is, what is at the same time as well, women do throw themselves. Yeah. Right? That's a, and and, that's and then it, it can get... It can get the, they could then tw- they might have an element of regret later, mm. and then twist the words to save, save face and sa- save their persona they've created. So, yeah. and this is the reason I want a, a, a court case or a tribunal of this to happen because then we can hopefully get to know what the real truth is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like I said earlier, even just one person after the uh, of the I think it was seven or eight is telling the truth. He should be done for. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, if it's all seven, ugh, uh, it's. Maybe Same. lock up and throw away the keys, <laughs> um, but it's 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 such a shame to see that the, when, even when this when this goes out, we're gonna have young ladies who are gonna go out to the clubs and still put themselves in the vulnerable position because of their own making by throwing themselves at the DJ or at the artist, blah blah. blah. Bro, I I can go back. I can go back. Stories, even my mom's generation, where yeah. it's before the internet, yeah. where they would literally go on road. So if you have a band doing a UK yeah, tour yeah. or US tour, wherever yeah. tour, yeah. This, yeah. but they, but they uh, Bro, do you watch twelve thirty interviews with oh. um, these these girls? There's now a whole clique of them, mainly only fans girls. There you go. Oh. So you have oh. you, you have when twelve. They talk about yeah. they fully they hunt oh, yeah. down yeah. artists, yeah. musicians. Yeah. 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 It, but it's been it's, it's, it's been happening from time. It's it's, it's different now because we have social media. But back then they had to physically go. Mm-hmm. So like you have when take that one of the biggest boy bands in the UK. You had 12, 13, 14, 15 year olds. Uh, if they had like a ten date tour. Yeah, they right, outside, they they, they, camp, they go in everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, end up just announced. We should put that. End up just announced a reunion. Mm-hmm. I right. end up is more re- relevant to the twenty seven and older now because obviously they, they they finished eleven years ago, right? At the time when they when they stopped doing it, it's not going to be really, really relevant to the 13, 14, 15. But if you have someone who's that age now into a certain current artist, they, I mean, we've seen it at the big, isn't it? When an artist comes into town, they literally they they. Set, 7, 7 p.m. we open the doors for the concert. They're there five, and most of them very, very young. Back before social media happened, they will go wherever these guys are going. Like I say, parked outside the mm-hmm. hotel. Some of them will be looking. They go ham. They squeeze in and somehow get behind the backstage or get, don't get through the kitchen of the hotel these guys are staying in. Yeah. They are very, very determined fans. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. That's but, okay because they, yeah. they, they, they enjoy the music and they, they probably like, like the other. And that's where it stops. That's where it should stop. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that's where it should stop. But then some go further. Yeah. Right? There was this, the case with that footballer, who, uh, ex-Manchester City guy. He was, he was still in jail now with that young'un that he was uh, doing stuff with. Mendy. Not Mendy. I was an ex. Oh, okay. um, about six, seven years. Oh, still yeah, in jail. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was uh, England international yeah, as well. Yeah. And it started when she was Jump, young. She was Adam literally, she was literally Adam throwing Adam herself Adam. at him. Mm-hmm. On him. And he eventually bit. And next thing you have, literally, he found out that it's illegal because she was young. Blah, blah, blah. No, it, bro, no. Look at the thing, yeah. She told him way ahead. She was fifteen. Mom was trying to no, get. No, no, I'm, give, I'm, using, I'm using that as an example. This, this what, I get that. I mm. get that. But like, you have to kind of. And this is what because mm-hmm. there's all right, cool. There's girls throwing themselves at you, and it's hard to sometimes maintain. You mm-hmm. all right, cool. But once she says, man's trying to get her to come out and do certain mm-hmm. things, he's like, oh, link me at the club or wherever mm-hmm. it is. She's like, oh, I can't get in because I'm 15. Exactly, yeah. Yo, block the number, delete block, the thing. that's mm. you knowing it. Once you go beyond that, that's you. That's you. There's no exactly. excuse, there's nothing. But, and this is what I'm saying, this is what I'm saying, yeah. men are weak. I'm not, I'm not no, generalizing no, 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 men. Yes. Yeah, yeah, don't get yeah, me wrong. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> when, when, you, when you find that little window of opportunity thing, you're not going to get caught, then it's like, 
don't do it. Yeah. Have some self control. Right. So it's us as men, we need to do better. Do you know what the um, the, the the biggest issue is that we face as a society as well? Yeah, is that once you get to a certain point or a certain status in life, certain things are given. Mm. So if if I'm a celeb or I'm um, I'm a big name artist. And a woman comes to me, that's mm-hmm. the only reason why she's coming to me. Of course. Same way, like, well and truly, if a girl tries to come see me at 4 or 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. in the morning, I'm hoping that she's not coming to prayer service. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that is kind of, you know I mean, the expectation. This is, these, these have been cases where, mm-hmm. like, women have hit men up to go link them at, like, 4 or 5 in the morning. Oh, yeah. 100%. And they're doing something, and then she's like, ah, oh, that's not really what I came in mm-hmm. for, but he's expecting, he's, that's what he's expecting. And, mm-hmm. I felt coerced into doing it. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, uh, it's not a great area, but there's a lot of issues, like, just, socially yeah, that. Yeah. And it kind of goes back to this, why, like, I I would hope that that's not the case, but, yeah. like, people like Tim Westwood, with the experience in that, and if this is what he's doing, I could just imagine him having conversations mm-hmm. with young artists and just saying, yeah, man, these girls are just going to come through and, yeah, mm-hmm. man, you do your thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this is what was going to inspire these young men to go along, go down these mm-hmm. yeah. roads. So I think feel like that sense of entitlement because of the name, because of the brand. He has a duty to be, t- you know, he's, I, I keep saying he's positioned, mm. if it is true, because, you know, we're, we're innocent till proven guilty, right? Yeah. You know, so let's, let's start with that caveat. Mm-hmm. If it is true, you need to be slapped with the book around your face. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And you should have set a better example because other artists, as you say, will look up to Tim mm-hmm. and think that is the given. Yeah. See, oh, it isn't all these girls true, are coming back to my man's crib. What? Because it's yeah. Tim. Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe and if it to, isn't okay. true, these women need to be held accountable. Oh, for hell, yeah. hell yeah. Hell yeah. Know? Yeah, it's true. Um, the truth should come out. The truth should set you free. And I hope it's, um, it's something we can all learn from. from. Well, um, devil's advocate here. Devil's advocate here. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> keep digging myself. Keep digging myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. What well, I didn't hear from any of the, like, accusations was him physically, like, stopping someone. Yeah, I, I, yeah I haven't heard that as well. From what I picked up, I think maybe one said she was physically being stopped or she felt like she couldn't... I think it was one under age. Them. Was one under age? 17? Oh. Yeah, I think a few of them met him, met him when they were quite young. Yeah. But was it as in under 18? Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And I think for one, it went on for a little while. It wasn't a one-time thing. Yeah. Yeah, that was, um, yeah. yeah sure. But it was all... This is where I feel like parenting <laughs> is so strong. Same yeah. thing with the R. Kelly thing. We talked about it. Oh, let's not even go there again. Let's not go there, man. <laughs> yeah, we talked about this, but this is where I feel like it's parenting. Parenting, bro. Parenting. So know where your kids are. Exactly. Yeah. Know but where your kids are. These girls go into these situations expecting one thing, and then obviously the situation has changed. Mm-hmm. But at no point do they feel confident enough to pack their shit and leave. I'm sure there are other women that got in that same situation mm-hmm. and just like, yo, dad, come pick me up. Yeah. saying... Yeah, that's what I came for. Yeah, maybe because they, maybe they told their parents they, 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 yeah. they were getting somewhere else. I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay at Anna's yeah. place. <laughs> like one, one, of the, one of the girls was like, "Oh, he said um, we're going to go to studio, and you want to say mm-hmm. me sing?" But he took me to a restaurant, and then said we're going to his yard. Now I'm at the yard. Now I'm uncomfortable. Yeah, I don't want to leave. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, take your clothes off, wear tete, mm-hmm. like these type of things. But like, I feel like yeah, like you should have that confidence to say oh, yeah. If you, not everyone does, but yeah. this is what I mean, like parenting and kind of parenting, parenting, your kids yeah, pa- parenting is key. Um, we, I, I see. We, I really want to touch on that too much because you never know before they, we, we get sued. So what we've done with it so far is touch at the bitch that we know of. Mm. Nobody's saying it, if somebody's guilty or not. Nobody's saying it. it's just like yeah. men. We should do better. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Especially if we're in position of authority. Um, also, also, um, little girls and ladies, um, don't put yourself in a vulnerable position as well. Situation, uh, it, 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 it might be hard sometimes, but just make sure that you have people that know where you are. Uh, if just say 
let your mate know let your parent know your, 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 somebody know that you are I'm here I'm th- I'm in this place with this person I if you don't hear back from me in five minutes or ten minutes shout me call my phone or come find me uh just then you, you don't put yourself in a situation that that Absolutely. that happens I mean we actually we, we turn trying to go from deep to thingy let's talk about music I, I, I talk about music let's talk about your music <laughs> e <laughs> EMG, baby. EMG, E Vision Music Group. What's happening, bro? Yes, Music sir. Group. Talk uh, to us. Hey, you guys are making me shy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my brother. Uh, it's at the table's yours. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's been going on? Yeah, yeah. so um, we've been been going for a year now. For the for the uh, for the last year, it was really about getting the the bass set. Mm-hmm. Um, the idea. So me, I'm a big Afrobeats fan. Mm-hmm. My, it's my number one thing. Well, and truly, where I know this guy from? <laughs> when I first moved to Bournemouth, right? <laughs> when I first moved to Bournemouth, I think uh, there was a club in Lansdowne. I think it was called Camel or... Per- they had you know, some Egyptian name, I think, connotation to it. Do you remember that one? That's now the basement or whatever it's called. It used to be or- it turned into Orange Rooms and then something else now. Camel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ro- 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 well, room like, 6 in Lansdowne? No, I feel like it was called Camel or something. No, this is, the no, Camel's no, already Camel. Was- yeah. Camel's already Camel. Yeah, Camel. Back in the day, camel. I don't think it was. No, Camel's know. always been Camel. Is it? Yeah. Is it, are you, what, what, next door to it? Or? Please, no, no, no. In Lansdowne. This is Lansdowne. By know? KFC? Nah. Next to Old Fire Station, that way. So it's now... Empire Club. It's now... Empire Club. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, for y'all that don't know, that's how far back I feel like I go. <laughs> and I used to do my underage clubbing. <laughs> yeah, I used to go to Empire because there's one DJ from London that used to come down. Mm. The Afro, you play... Like more urban yeah. music, and then I found out yo, busy's in this town as well. Like, doing this thing. So I started going to more like I think you're doing cameo or whatever. I was, I was in, I was in. It's called Elements then. Yeah, and then bliss, I was no, bliss, bliss. Remember, I used bliss, to be in bliss, yeah, yeah. and so it's bliss V wow. and Empire, yeah. Uh, v, I still got that video of you in V. So you yeah. look so young in that video, bro. bro. That's 2009. V. Wow. <laughs> Do you know what's mad? Do you know what's mad? Well, it's on YouTube still. Do you know what's mad? Is it? <laughs> That's that's mad, yeah. I was talking to um, I was talking to my girl about this because yeah. that's I think the thir- the first time I actually saw. Her. But he, he, but you guys, and yeah, yeah. But our, then our brethren, our brethren came to link my friend. <laughs> see, see how that's the, the first time I actually met it's mad, it's mad. Exactly, yeah. But, but that I'm night, so cool. that night, like, I was so gasped, bro. So we pulled up back in the day. There was a car park mm-hmm. at the bottom by Halo. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. We come down the hill, turning into the car park. Yeah. And this guy was playing Premier Gawu. <laughs> and that tree used to gas me, yeah. Uh, yeah, gas. yeah. Gas. <laughs> I told Andy, yo, park up. We're run- Bro, we pulled up. We're running to this club because it's the only tune that That's used to... They play that in Empire yeah. and nowhere else. <laughs> and now I can hear it coming out the church. So I pulled up and I'm running to this club. Like, yo, we get there and there's a queue. And, uh, Bro, a Friday, you know. Like, yo, I just want to get inside. <laughs> I'm hoping... The next tune is Afro Q. <laughs> Bro, by the time we get through the queue, mama has changed it up. It's not changed. But that, just the fact that I could hear Afro being played at this stage, like... Yeah, bro. Yeah, so God. That's, that's always been my thing. So the idea of, uh, of, the, of E-Vision Music Group um, was to build a platform to, to elevate or give Afro beats musicians at least a, start, a starting block. Because I know they're now tapped in. Majors are tapped into mm. Afro now. But they're going for the established artists. They wait for you to be established. Mm. And then they come and give you the big book. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, but I feel like there's a lot of opportunities that we not that we weren't exploring yeah. for Afrobeat musicians and people weren't really valuing it. But it's a, as, as an industry, it's, what, two years ago, it was valued at like 8.3 billion or something yeah. as, a, as an industry. Just Afrobeat music. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what EMG was set up for. Um one of the first artists that kind of came around that really made man say, all right, cool, we're going to do this, mm-hmm. was um, was Barry J. Mm-hmm. So one of my guys knew, knew Barry J um, and he was looking for a situation at the time. Yeah, big up Barry J, by the way. Big Barry, yeah, man. Big up Barry. So he went to, went to Dubai uh, at the time. I think he needed to get out of night. He wanted to go somewhere else. So he said he's going to Dubai. So if you want to do anything, he'd come link him there. Mm. Went to Dubai with a couple of the guys that were working with us at the time. Um, so we met Barry, and then I'm listening to this guy. Just talent is on, bro. Mm. It's the craziest thing. Just no, 
off the notice a banger. Mm. So we took him to this club where he had a show. Um, I introduced him, brought him onto the stage and that. And I'm just watching the people react. Me, I can't understand your mm. mm-hmm. And he's very young. Mm. Barry's a very young guy. But he's looking at the crowd. It's quite older Nigerians. Mm. Bro, like the guy, whatever he's saying, it's hitting these people in the soul. Mm. <laughs> like real talk. Yeah. Like they say, yo, if you can understand what this guy's mm. saying, it's serious, bro. Mm. Like he's so young, but he's serious. Mm. So that just gave me more energy. Just like trying to do everything to get this over the ball, uh, over the over the board with uh, with Barry. Then um, he introduced me to the producer, which was the first guy that um, I signed to the to the label and the management. Mm-hmm. Um, the producer that I was with him at the time, so uh, named V Sticks. Right. Now, if you don't know V Sticks, a guy has been in the D DMW camp for mm-hmm. a long time. Mm-hmm. That's Davido's um, label, by the yeah, way. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's a guy that produces a lot of the tracks for him. Um, got some, some Labaja, I think, was mm-hmm. one of the biggest bangers for oh, yeah. Peruzzi. Okay. He produced mm-hmm. that. Um, a lot of Dreamos hits, mm-hmm. Mayo Kun's tracks. Mm-hmm. This is the kid that was producing it. And I just saw him just in Dubai, just casual. And he's mm-hmm. just like, bro, like, been doing this. And you look at the catalogue of some of these guys, mm-hmm. and it's like, bro, you should never <laughs> have to ask anyone for anything. Mm-hmm. There's American art, like, producers with lesser catalogs mm. than this kid. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're talking about, like, Big David. <laughs> Some of the tracks that this kid's worked on mm. are on the album, and this guy is buying private jets. And these kids can't buy, you know what I'm saying? Crazy, isn't it? Can't get a car or, like, wow. something like that. So it was about just setting up a, a platform a, to... A professional to, structure, in it, make sure professional they, structure. They, they get what, they earn what they deserve. Yeah. Yeah. Explaining things like... Um, how to uh, how to chase up your royalties, mm-hmm. um, you, where your streaming is coming from, mm-hmm. or your shares. I'll make sure the paperwork and stuff is right. So, Barry was a little bit tricky at the time um, because there's a lot of eyes on him. I think there's yeah. another there's another label trying to sign him. I think yeah, I time. think he got next at the time, and people are looking at the next the next yeah guys who are going to build. This one we had IA. Bear in mind, he was um, he's from the DMW camp mm-hmm. as well. He's a writer for David David David. David, David yeah. Brizzy. Um, so he's a writer there for a long time. Mm-hmm. This kid is young, like early twenties. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's a writer for them man for a while. So, um, but this producer just had my attention. Everything, like, he's very switched on. Very humble guy mm-hmm. initially. So talked about everything and then spoke to his lawyers and we got it over the board. And the idea was to work with him over the year um, remotely. He was to stay in Dubai, work with him remotely, whether we build a studio out mm-hmm. there for him or we bring him here to work. Um, so then I want to expand the catalogue. Um, so I was looking at whatever, what else could we do? We've got a producer on the board now. Get more creatives on. We need more creatives on. Um, you need dance, you need singing. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, yeah. Remember, I used to manage the Ghana boys. Yeah, yeah. Right, for a while as well. Pick up the Ghana boys. Pick yes, Ghana yes. Boys. They're, they're not together anymore, but they, yeah. The brand's still there, isn't it? The yeah. brand's still there. Mm-hmm. The brand is very heavy. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it weighs on all of them, I think. Like, it's hard to come from underneath that. And, and, and feel like you're starting all over again from an independent yeah. point of view. Yeah. yeah. So I used to manage them, but I know, like, they'd gone their separate ways, but they setting up as solo musicians. Mm-hmm. So... K actually got in touch with me initially when he saw what we were doing um, with, with, with Barry and with V Sticks. He said, bro, I want to go on this journey. I want to make music. I've started making some music. They already started. So one of the yeah. things I was doing with them when they, when they were um, doing dance, when they were just purely dancing, was they were doing a lot of dance to yeah. people's music when they do workshops and stuff. It was on. But they added their ones as well. So yeah. that was the yeah. thing. So I said, bro, we got, they know all these artists. And they, they can make music. They I had a basic structure for making music. I said, all right, cool. This is what we're going to do now. Anything that you guys make, make sure that it's what you do your dances to. Mm-hmm. Any of the workshop, this is what we do it to. And just build that it up from building there. that, yeah. Yeah. So they started building a little catalog of music and they were doing, they were, they were lit. They were getting booked, not just to dance, mm-hmm. but to, 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 to perform as musicians. And they were doing really well. Then they weren't separate. But in the, the issue is, it's always when you have a group. Mm-hmm that hasn't fully established itself, mm-hmm. right? And they go solo. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. You're going to get very raw. Yeah. yeah. 
material because they, like they, they haven't they haven't established themselves yeah. that strongly as a group. But yeah, now speak, as, it's as like musicians. Yeah, as musicians, yeah. So um, I took on Key, and it was about just trying to just build and nurture. But the good thing with working with with this guy mm-hmm. is they have the background of the dance. Yeah. So they could dance. They have the people that know them for the dance mm-hmm. and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So you're gonna get some. You're gonna get. You're not starting from zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was a good thing. About it. So then I got K. Um, K brought Andy to me. Yeah. Um, so I ended up having two out of the three. Fortunately, just around that time, um, or just before that time, actually, is when Bogus Mrs. passed away. Passed away, yeah. During, that was during the remote. pandemic, a very, a very sad time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sad. My condolences, Bogus. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that was a it was a very tough time for all of them and like it causes a lot of strain like people deal with with things very different yeah you know what I'm saying it's characters and all of that stuff is very it's very deep and they were all very young so I had two two or three with me um, I was hoping eventually to get all three mm. um, but I had two it's like collecting stones. infinity stones eh <laughs> yeah, yeah there would have been infinity stones right? <laughs> but it's always been love man it's always yeah. been love I love the guys they, they, they do their thing and yeah just been tapping into the industry since then yeah. just knocking on doors yeah um, one of the first things was trying to see how we can get onto mainstream platforms um, and try and tap into those side of, mm-hmm. side of things because there's a lot of like ad hoc or like smaller radio sets mm. that play things like Afro and stuff mm. but at the same time um, the, the the big stations were paying attention they had to because of Whiskid Whiskid, yeah. is, Whiskid is selling out four, four, four days in a row Alexandra Palace I think at the time yeah which is I think 15, 20,000 or so he's still at O2 isn't it four, four, four straight nights in a row yeah which is, Man, which is eight, recent eight, which is, yeah. Yeah. yeah which is recent before that he'd done Alexandra, he'd done, yeah. a, he'd, done a, he'd done Alexandra Palace I think 6,000 Oh, so, yeah, that sold out. They, so they've been selling it out for Youngs, bro. Yeah, so he's it's sold out every he sold out every course. venue other than the O2 up until that point. Yeah, so they had to pay attention. Mm-hmm. The money was there. It's showing you. Davido is big hit. Mm-hmm. Every track, big hit. Mm-hmm. You look at the stream numbers compared to major artists. Mm-hmm. These men are and, they, and I also remember the independence with streaming. Yeah, they might have yeah. like a, a major link in terms yeah. of distribution, or whatever. But they are yeah. still generally independent. And generally, also independent. remember, yeah. they are not actually. They hardly do the top twenty of mainstream chart. Yeah. So it's but the, but the people are taking notice. They, yeah, hundred percent. You have they're, to. They're not major radio. They're not getting major radio airplay yeah, yeah. because but a, they are doing numbers as an industry, people right? People like Ed Sheeran jumping yeah. on our stuff. Do you know what I mean? You know, yep. um, uh, Justin Bieber. Do you yeah. know what I mean? They, you know, they all so. had to pay attention because some, something, 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 something is changing. Yeah. When you when before when you went to the charts, let's say Billboard, the most, yes. Um, relevant as they call it the billboard um, charts right and he looked at the numbers there the first 50 it's going to be people that you see all the time mm. you recognise that mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying it's going to be big name American artists um, UK artists mm-hmm. do you know what I'm saying very mainstream you know who it is mm-hmm. you don't even need to see the number that <laughs> <laughs> where, the, they, the, they, the their thing is where am I where am I going to be it's not am I going to be on there mm. it's where am I going to be mm. you know what I'm saying mm. And at some point, something changed. Yeah. Now the numbers have changed. I think now you go into the list mm. and you're like, wait, Whiskey is in top 10? Yeah. yeah. Davido is in there? Yeah. Bro, we... Afro now beats, Afro, Afro beats, Afro sounds, Afro music, um, yeah. piano. It, it had to... It bum-rushed the place. Yeah. It's, and and, and the, the thing for me as a fan of the music as well, the yeah. genre and the culture itself, is we did not wait. And, yeah. and like you guys said, it's like you having all this this mainstream artists now jumping on it. Yeah, they jump, they jumping on it. Yeah, mm-hmm. we didn't go. I mean, at the start, going back like 12, 13 years mm-hmm. ago, when P Square was trying to get yeah. Snoop Dogg, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. But that's few and far between. But that's now they're coming to us. Yeah. yeah. So this 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 is the the mm-hmm. one of the key things that has changed in terms of the music industry, right? Before, you had to come here to make it. Mm-hmm. Every artist felt like they had to come mm-hmm. here. They had to come do shows in, mm-hmm. in London. Mm-hmm. They had to do shows in, in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. No, it's not. No. It's the internet has leveled the playing field to an extent, yeah. That <laughs> Including TikTok as well. It's mad, isn't it? Leveled it. <laughs> leveled it. So if you don't know, TikTok counts as streams, right? Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> that has completely changed the ballgame. Right? <laughs> changed the ballgame. Yeah. But uh, you listen to someone like one they talk, one, uh, one they call talk, yeah. 
you tell you like, bro, if I come to the UK, I want to get five, five, ten grand to do a show, mm. like some little little place, two, three thousand capacity. Mm. Yeah, they man do shows in Nigeria and get a hundred bags. Mm. Easy. Easy, easy, and they they did it. They know they in the arenas, they in stadiums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred fifty thousand, yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah. The video will tell you, like, as an interview you did with Wale and I, and he says, "Bro, <laughs> I could get paid a million or some ridiculous number, yeah, yeah to perform at someone's wedding in Nigeria." Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The the level the levels change. It's completely mm. different. And no, this is the thing that I commend Nigerians for, right? As a Ghana man, my people will shell me. <laughs> <laughs> GH in the building, Come Black on, Star. Man. Hey, that's what I'm <laughs> take the applause. <laughs> we're here, we're here, we're here, we're in the building. We're trying, man. We're trying. So I've got, I've got, I've got two, I've got two Ghanaian and two. Well, uh, V6 um, uh, renewal is done. He's gone somewhere else now. Mm. Um, I've got two Ghanaians and one Nigerian still on the label. Um, looking to expand with a group that has a mix. Mm-hmm. They're really dope. Dope group, man. Mm. Um, I'll tell you off the thing mm. where one of them comes from, but it's, it's dope. But this is what I commend Nigerians for massively. Yeah, mm. Nigerians understood the game. Yeah, very from early the jump. Yeah, because mm. yeah, because Ghanaians make better music to some extent, bro. I'm mm. not lie, bro. Country. I'm not gonna <sighs> hold on, 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 hold Anyone that's buzzing in Nige at some point had to go and get the sauce in Ghana. They had you know what? I will, Rima, I will agree to that to an extent. Rima lived in Ghana while he was starting up his music. He's got his influences from there. Mr. Easy lived in Ghana. Yeah, big up. Um, yeah. Whiskid stayed in Ghana. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until the slowdown with R2Bs. Mm-hmm. R2Bs had bigger clout. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. They put yeah, him yeah. on massively. Yeah, and yeah. I respect how he's repaid that mm. massively. Oh, 100%. Him. Yeah. Like, Payday is his guy. Yeah. And he's kind of jamming the, the, the face of like street rap and mm. street music in Ghana. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not like, I'm not saying, it, like, it's not an offensive thing to say, like, I feel like Ghanaians made, and our music was, I feel like, I know you got Fuji and then, mm. but Ghanaians had a very diverse sound, bro. Hip life, high life. Yeah, I was gonna say hip life and high life. I, I think, I and personally think Nigerian. Nine- Nine- we had Azonto, all of that stuff. Yeah, I personally yeah, think, yeah, yeah, I personally yeah. think Nigerian artists or West African artists would go to Ghana mm. to complete themselves as a wholesome artist. Mm. Does that make so sense? It's like a right, but, that, of but yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's like a right of passage, yeah. like to, to have that complete. Mm-hmm. But this is what I mean, though. You that have to go source. through that. So, yeah. This is the source, yeah. bro. Because yeah. when you come there, I feel like you're exposed to... Just the uh, garnish. The garnish. Yeah, the yeah. Chubb can cake, feel and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. It, 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 does, it does level up. Yeah. And I think, like, we're very chill as a people, yeah? And Nigerians are very, like... On Boisterous. Yeah. 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 I can <laughs> say it. But the chill, <laughs> but the chill creates, creates an, a work environment that mm-hmm. I think allows you to be... A different level of creative. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's just what I'm saying. So, although I feel like personally, I feel like we make better music mm-hmm. or make more diverse music. Mm-hmm. I have better music. I, I feel like Nigerians really understood the game. Uh, this Nigerians understood the game. violence. I have to. It's that I have whole to. Right We're not going to go there. Let's right? not right? go there. <laughs> Where are you guys watching the World Cup? Oh, 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 shots. Let's, let's, let's give let's give let's give let's give let's give Yeah. Let me laugh. Watching it from Ghana. Let me, yeah. 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 We have lights. Oh. <laughs> Come, come watch, come watch. 24 hours light. <laughs> right, okay. Um, nah, let's, no, let's talk let about... Me no, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me land, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. I feel like Nigerians really understood the game and they understood in investing in the industry mm. because it went from like something that seemed like a hobby mm-hmm. something that you did against your parents' approval mm-hmm. to actually now we can make money from this. Yeah. We can actually make a living from this. Mm-hmm. What we have to do is invest in this. So Nigerians really invested in it. You look at the video quality stream oh, yeah. before. Oh. Peace Square okay. changed the game. Yeah. yeah. Oh, big up Peace Square. Peace Square was always videos changing, yeah. like, do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like yeah, yeah, their yeah. videos was compet- compet- yeah, comparative mm. to videos coming out of America. Mm. Yeah, so Onions right. were essentially... <laughs> you, we know. We're still <laughs> filming videos like it was on mobile phones. Like, <laughs> man, it's still like today, <laughs> today you go watch... <laughs> the filming videos on 2K. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> oh. Bro, today you can watch like a Ghanaian Premier League football game, yeah, and it looked like someone is filming it on, like, I don't know, bro, like a Samsung. Nokia 3310. Yeah, bro, literally. It's grainy. Yeah, uh, so, so, 
Uh, what artists have you got? And yeah. what artists have you got coming up? What's what's coming up from coming up from the EMG camp? Or what's well, out? Or what's out, out soon? Forward to. So I know you have oh. a studio. Which you haven't you haven't plugged yes. that yet? The studio. Yeah. So one of the things last year was to to build a place where uh, our artists can work. Mm-hmm. From, mm-hmm. um, so we we'll build the studio, the Blue Room Studio. Yeah, I'm gonna be there. I know, I know, yeah, I know too, man. I know. Uh, <laughs> we could have done this setup in there, man. We got a space for you, man. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> nah, so that, that was the idea with the studio, yeah. and then obviously you want the studio to run itself. So mm. we are taking external bookings yeah. and stuff. So it's good, and it's about getting the talents in there, um, producers, engineers. Mm-hmm. We want to get all of that. And for me, it's important to tap into experienced producers, try and work with some of the best in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and that mix that with some of these up and coming guys and mm-hmm. really expose them. So what I'm really trying to do is take. There's a lot of guys in Bournemouth that are so talented, that don't have a direction. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Sometimes it's just about seeing someone that's. Do you know what I'm saying that's that's of your caliber or someone that's similar to you that's managed to kind of get. Yeah. That. So things like we've, the producers that we work that we've worked with um, mm-hmm. for um, for King K. Um, for um, for sorry, for Fresh Andy, mm-hmm. um, a gift not yeah, Kitoko sounds did mm-hmm. um, Spicho, which is mad. There, which is a bad tune. That's one of my favorite tunes. Bro, last that's year. the first time. Yeah, first time I felt like I heard Gift in this element. I I love Gift, yeah. Yeah, and he like he's a dope rapper. I've mm. seen this guy freestyle for yeah yeah time. Yeah, anyone that you know out here yeah. can rap. Big up Gift. Give it big, big, big up. Yeah. Anyone that can rap out here, if you tell them gift and they know gift, they'll tell you, yo, oh, that guy's yeah, cool. Like, yeah, he it's rap. cold. Yeah. But then, bruv, I left these men in the studio. That's what I used to do, right? Because mm. I'm, I'm, I feel like sometimes I'm like bad energy, bruv. <laughs> I'm on job, innit? Yeah. yeah. Like, everyone wants to have a good time. Yeah, yeah. And me, I'm like, I'm on job. I'm like, yeah, time, <laughs> I don't know what, I, I Structure, don't structure. Yeah, I, yeah. What do we need? What do, yeah, this yeah. needs to mm. get done? And they just sometimes just want to just. It's creative, bro. Yeah, yeah. They just don't bro, give it to us. I left these guys. I left them, I left them to it. And I come back and I heard do, 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 do. I was like, this is different. Mm-hmm. And then I heard Gift Spit. Yeah. In his native language. Yeah. And I was like, yo. Yeah, welcome bro, home. Bro, this is you. <laughs> this is you. I took, they, they did a basic bounce of the track here. Yeah. And then um, I took that with me and I was just playing it for people to hear. Mm. And not a single person when I said that was Gift would believe me. Yeah. I said, that's Gift, bro. They're like, nah, bro. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Nah, bro. What do you mean? My girl's like, wait, who's that? <laughs> I, was like, I was in the kitchen. I was yeah. in the kitchen playing it. Yeah, I was in the kitchen playing it. She's in the living room. She comes, man. Pops out. Who's that? <laughs> That's yeah. gift. Nah, nah. He does. He does like UK rap. <laughs> Like yo, I said yo, listen, this is gift. This is gift. Gift is gifted. Yo, <laughs> and yeah, man, he was in this element. He, he killed it, and then they did Anita together. They got a bunch, a bunch of songs. There's yeah, a couple tracks that K okay, got with the, okay. the the collective BHE, yeah. which is Gifts Group, mm-hmm. and that's cold. We, yeah, we yeah, premiered, yeah. Premiered one at Smade's Lounge. Yeah, um, yeah, I remember that uh, about a month, ago, a month and a half ago. Um, yeah, about, give or take. Yeah, about two months ago. Yeah. Premiered it at Smade Lounge and the energy was good. People vibe to it. It's mm-hmm. good. Um, they got they got so much sauce and so much coming through. So when K K went to Ghana last year, mm-hmm. we sent him Ghana and that was to tap into. So I've been speaking to Street Beats. Uh, if you don't know Street Beats, Street Beats is big up Street Beats as well. Biggest producers to come out of Ghana. Mm-hmm. One of the big, as a matter of fact, I think he produced the biggest track to come out of Ghana. And that is Sarkodie and Kafros Adonai. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That tracks out almost I, I, 100 million I, 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 views. I keep getting Bones. sad every time. Yeah. Castro is my guy. Castro. You know? I met Castro in Amsterdam. Yeah. The guy is lit, man. He's such a nice guy. So uh, it's sad. I love this time. music so much. Bro. Adonai. A, uh, guys, A D O N A I. Castro, Sakodi, that is a tune. You, uh, the beauty about Afrobeats is you might not even understand it, nah, but you but feel you, it. you feel it. And this is why I explain uh, to a lot voice. of these guys. Um, nah, yeah, like I used to even saying to give, like, bro, like I don't understand what you're saying on speech, or, yeah, mm. but it's cold. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. cold. Yeah, same as Sakodi. Like I understand Sakodi, mm. but I get the other day I, I was talking to you. There's this artist from um, Seneg- Senegal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, is it Senegal? Yeah, 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 yeah. From no, from Sudan. Sorry, Sudan, yeah. from Sudan. Yeah, I've never heard Sudan rap before. The uh, guy comes in and he raps. Mm. This language called Wolof. I've never heard of it before. Yeah. <laughs> never heard before. Sudanese rap. Mm. Yeah, wow. the guy raps and I'm like, yo, you're sick. Mm. You know, the flow is dope. He comes and does his thing. 
And I was sat them down and I was talking to him. And I was like, bro, what do you do? how do you people hear music? Mm. He's like, ah, WhatsApp. I send WhatsApp. Mm. Like, bro, <laughs> so other than you sending, to sending music to, yeah. on WhatsApp to your friends, that, mm. there's not, no, what else can I do? I'm like, bro, come on. I'm talking, to, talking about distribution mm. and just making this music available and stuff. And as I'm talking to him, I'm like, bro, who's the hardest rapper in, in Sudan? Mm. And he's like, I don't really listen to Sudan rap, bro. Like, who do you listen to? Sakodi, bro. Sakodi. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, he goes, big up Sakodi. Oh, he goes, Sakodi, you know Sakodi? You know? Yeah. He's not, he, the guy is sick. He's trying to educate me on Sakodi. I'm like, bro, chill out, chill out, bro, bro. Let me tell you about Sakodi, bro. Let me, like, he made me fall in love with African music, like, all over in a different way, bro. Yeah. When he very first come through, do you remember there was a time where he was signed or about to sign to Akon? Mm, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. That was the first time he come to the UK. Mm-hmm. Okay. And he had a show at quite a big place in, uh, where was this? Was Stratford. It? Stratford. Uh, Stratford Center. Uh, I know what the place is called. I actually do know. It's like they, they changed it from Stratford Rex to like more of a... That's what it was. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's what it was, Stratford Rex. Mm. Yeah. That was his first time in the UK, his first show. Yeah. And this is the time where he's more time just doing freestyles. Yeah, he's just doing freestyles online. Didn't even drop other night mm-hmm. yet. He was just hard. The guy was just hard rapper. So crazy. Everyone knew hard. online. Bro, I just, bro, I stopped everything I was doing. I, sh- I hit my boys up. I said, yo, bro, we need to go see this guy. They said, yeah, man, we need to go. Mm. Bro, we did everything we could. We packed up three of us in a small ass car mm. all the way to, to London to go see this mm. guy. And um, I think Sneakball opened um, a couple more UK eyes. Mm-hmm. And this around the time that Talking the Hardest was buzzing. Mm, so 2011, yeah. 2010, yeah, 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 yeah. It come out not long ago. And I remember when they introduced him, they slapped the Talking the Hardest beat on. Oh, instrumental as well. And he came up freestyling to that. Oh, I'll never oh, forget. Smoked the thing. <laughs> like, oh, oh. <laughs> Sakur is a beast, bro. Beast, bro. Sakur he is came a beast. Out, he, I think he came out, he killed it, and then, and then Giggs came out mm. and did a verse. Yeah, to oh, it with him. Oh, yeah, and I'll just never then, forget. Yeah? Oh, it's so mad. That's there's a, there's a craziest somewhere. thing. There's a craziest thing. The craziest thing about that whole night, bro. Yeah, we go VIP and we're up in the in the bits. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, yo, this is cold. Yeah, man, I'm to VIP. The thing was so lit. Everyone from VIP was downstairs. Yeah, so maybe like ten people upstairs. <laughs> me, I just wanted. Yeah, you know I'm saying. You know, mm. you paid for yeah, VIP, yeah. so you want to be in VIP. Mm. Yeah, yeah, my brethren just looked at me. My guy, Nat, it's like, bruv, you are a waste, man. <laughs> <laughs> down the party, that's where the party is at, yeah. bro. Because you're looking you know, downstairs. This is why I'm not VIP, yeah, person. People are yeah. having the time of their yep. life. This, yep. Every bar that this guy is dropping, everyone. Yes, yeah. it's, it's not just Garnier, stage it's presence, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's not just absolutely. I seen him recently, um, in Northampton. I think last month or a couple weeks ago. Um, working with this um, promoter that um, was putting him on, um, he's supposed to do. Um, I think it was Black Sheriff or something, and, mm-hmm. he, go through it and he got Sarko the last minute, and I was just gassed to see the guy again. And the guy's just, <laughs> and it's even better now. It's just, yeah. it's just it's it improves his age. It's just mad. Yeah, man. like a fine and just to see, just just so like you see the level that African music is going. Yeah, at. yeah, like so. Yeah. Again, back to EMG. That's the idea. That yeah, we want to build inspiration to get that. Yeah. For, do you know what I'm saying? So the working with Street Beats, um, working with um, a couple of my guys out mm-hmm. over in Sony, um, some really dope producers from Nigeria, mm-hmm. Spirit Mix that mixes all these mm-hmm. nice music. It mixes my Nigerian mm-hmm. uh, music. I need to hook you up my sound engineer then in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, man. For sure, man. Because yeah, I know you're tapped in, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, your socials, bro. Yeah. Where, uh, yeah, where, where to man. check EMG stuff? Yeah. Um, so um, anything EMG, um, EMG, uh, EMG Records underscore Global on IG. Mm-hmm. Um, the studio that's the Blue Room Bournemouth. Mm-hmm. Um, for myself, it's Quaffstar uh, underscore EMG. So K W O W F S T A R. K W O W F S T A R underscore EMG. Uh, give, give that EMG one again. The EMG Insta. EM, EMG Records underscore Global. global. EMG Records underscore We're Global. Uh, Evision Music Group. E Vision Music that's the regional, that's the motherboard. That's the motherboard. That's the motherboard. E Vision Music Group. Check it out. Please. On Insta, send me, send me the on Facebook. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. So you got, you got a website. Is, you got a website, man. That's it, evision music group, uh, dot com. That's the website. Evision Music Group dot com. Yeah. yeah. And uh, bro, thanks for coming down. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for having me, man. And um, it's been great. Um, also, check out our socials, the Cast Offs Pod 
on Instagram. Uh, Omar, what's your Instagram? Uh, goodness underscore Omar, Omar underscore. underscore. Yep. Um, <laughs> BH scenes, B H S C E or B H S C E N E S on Instagram. Uh, I'm DJ Busy on Insta. The D- cameraman that actually filmed <laughs> Speech Show, which is a dope ass yeah, video. Yeah, we yeah. had a lot of fun in um, yes, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. The episode will be dropping on there. It's youtube.com forward slash the business T H E B I Z N E Z. Um, so when we drop more episodes, you get notified too as well. Um, thanks for listening in. Don't forget to also subscribe to um, the Cast of Podcast on uh, Amazon, Google, Spotify, all that good stuff. Uh, wherever you listen to your pod, your pod from or your stream, your audio stream, just type in the Cast Offs podcast and we will be there. You can listen to us on the go. Uh, it's been great. Uh, I can't wait to put this out and I can't wait to see the end product as well. So uh, anything you need, if any more suggestions as well um, or topics you'd like to discuss or you want to come on to the pod, give me a shout uh, at DJ Busy or at the Cast Offs pod or at the business, T H E B I double Z N E Z. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, that's it for now. Boom, bish, bash, bosh, latest. Thanks for listening. Thank you.